Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of HW Show Squared. This is episode 37, I want to say. And this is the show where we take the usual formula or format of a now defunct HW Show podcast and it's parent to the power of, you guessed it, two. I hit my microphone there. Uh, but my name is, as always, Dan, DP, or as we all say nowadays, D, P, Z. Yeah! And I am joined by someone who, to his own admission, is very sus. Someone who didn't show up last week due to reasons unknown that he refuses to share. I am joined, of course, not by Frosty, because he's, he's, he's just a sus, but not a Frosty. I am joined by the original sus master himself, Mr. Impact Craig. How are you doing? <laughs> I'd just like to state not by my own admission, <laughs> not sus. <laughs> But yes, you know me, it's that M I C Craig Aiken, Mr. Impact. Yes, and I yes, was away last week purely because I was up north up to north watching some wrestling. But I am back and life no longer get life's no longer getting in the way, so let's I best we talk some NXT Indeed, yes, let's talk some NXT. And this was, of course, uh, NXT Spring Breaking, uh, which was for the 23rd of April, which would have been uh, Tuesday, obviously. It was on Tuesdays. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we did get into the show itself. Um, things that get kicked off with uh, Ava. She's in, the, she's in her office with Adam Pearce. And also Nick Aldis, who's appearing via satellite because he's now a Terminator. Um <laughs> They're just generally talking about the draft coming up, and they're talking just about spring breaking. It's just something that they do, I guess. Um, of course, it should be noted that this is being recorded after SmackDown, so it's currently Sunday. Spoilers: uh, It's Sunday, so <laughs> we're recording day of release, which is always a fun, a fun little experience. Um, and it's just basically going to be before after the draft, so. Some people that some people that we talk about here may have been drafted to Raw back down. They may not have. We don't know, but we'll cover that towards the end. Um, and we might also have a look at the week two for spring breaking as well. I don't know yet. Just depends how I'm feeling because I'm a little bunged up because I've got a bit of a bit of an oncoming cold. Uh, so we'll just see what happens. And I think Craig is on the brink of having one himself. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, get to the actual match aspect of this show. Uh, we kick things off straight away with the NXT Women's Championship triple threat: uh, Lyra Valkyria, Tayna Paxley, and Champion Roxanne Perez. Um, well, Roxanne Perez wins and retains following a four fifty splash from Tatum to Lyra, and then rolling Tatum over with a bridging pin. Um, I rate this three and a half stars. I. I it was a great opener. Um, it did something really well, which I was, I was surprised by this. But everyone looked like a threat at some point in this match. But I was, I'm very surprised by how Tatum came across in this match. In this one match, they've showcased her as a credible threat to the title than they have in the last few months. Like, before this, she was with Lyra, and it was like, oh, sidekick, tag partner, whatever. And now she's like, this one performance from her has really, like, just like, you know, she spread her wings and, you know, she's really sort of coming to her own here. And it's, it's, just really, it's, really, it's really weird to say, because I, I just never saw it coming from, from Tatum. But I, I don't know what sparked it. I'm pleased it came across. Uh, Lyra continued to be good, but was strangely the weakest entry in this match. Uh, whereas Roxanne looked like she was desperate. She weird to sneak a win, do what it takes to get that win. And that is just what she did. She, she she bided her time, saw the moment, took it, wins. Great match, no one let it up, great yeah. pace, loved it. <laughs> yeah, um I'm I'm with you on it. That match. I thought it was one of the better matches of the night. And yeah, Tatum looked really good. I yeah, wasn't expecting it either. Uh uh, Roxanne, uh, I haven't been the biggest fan of a heel run, but when it comes to stuff like this, to the point where she's 
you know, just trying to get get away with the title in any way she can. Just escape as champion. Just, you know, sneak up, roll, whatever it takes. I, I like that. It's it's simple but really effective, and it, it's sort of, a, sort of a heel that the, this type of heel Roxanne is portraying needs to do, and she does it very well. She, uh, yeah, Lyra was. It, I'm not sure if. Is is her injury, injury legit? Like it seems to be. I think it is. But yeah. it's clearly a, a, um, clear to compete, which is good still. But yeah, uh, Tatum really surprised me in this one. Yeah. No, so it. She's. She, she looks like a very credible challenger, as you said, and to the point where if on Raw. Uh, Roxanne is one is someone that gets drafted. I I wouldn't mind if Tatum wins a title at some point. Mm-hmm. It I because she, again she played she played the character of you know like Lyra's essentially stalker to partner, yeah. and then as soon as as soon as lost as soon as Lyra loses the title. She doesn't want to be around Lara anymore. She just wants the title, which yeah, I thought, which I, I still thought was, I still think is great. Mm-hmm. But it, yeah, in general, the match is probably one of the better matches of the card. Very strong opener. I, I enjoy a nice triple threat, and it's not you don't always get a lot of triple threat action in triple threat matches, which is confusing sometimes. But it had a fair bit in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a, a very, very, good, very, very good opener and. Because I thought with NXT, with with, with, with Night like, Warner Spring Break, I thought they put out the big guns too early. But we'll have to see on how Night Two comes along. We'll, but yeah, we'll get to very that. Good, strong we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But I, I I do generally agree with that statement. I I do think that Week One on paper is absolutely the the stronger the stronger card. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 as you say as well, like with this being the cover kind of setup. If Lyra's out for injury uh, or rehab, whatever, and you know Tatum could well be on her way up in regards to her booking and her status within the division. Obviously, as it stands right now, Roxanne's champion. Tatum's not in line for a shot because she got pinned here. Uh, but saying that Tatum could go for a North American title. Yeah. Uh, th- honestly, I can see it. Like she's proven in this in this match alone that she can hang. Which I don't know why she couldn't do it before, <laughs> but <laughs> I know, right? It's it's an interesting one. It is because this this North American women's North American title has become. I th- when it, when they announced it, I thought of maybe two to three people who could potentially hold it. Yeah. But since it's been announced, like the women's division, who who the, the women who aren't in this main title picture have shown up a bit more, and like I can't quite pick out who could be the first North American champion. So I'm um, I mean I mean I'm intrigued of as to who they do put to put that title on. Yeah, absolutely. Um so uh, we move on now from that match. Uh we go into the continuous rally of just he's our hero, whoop that trick. Yeah. Uh, so we get basically a lot of like back and forth on like Twitter and people being like, oh, I think X is going to win. Uh, so, right, so we get like input from Jake Cargill, Austin Theory, uh, Grayson Waller, Rey Mysterio, LA Knight, Bobby Lashley, uh, various fans on X as well. Uh, I didn't count them. It was 10 votes for Trick and 6 for Ilya. Uh, <laughs> which it, 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 it'll be an ongoing thing as you go forward. But yeah, this is like this the story of Moses and like how he's like a this, this biblical uh, character trick. How he's got, how's he got, yeah. how's he got to slay the dragon. He's Saint George. If we're going, if we're going to like patron saint history. Uh, yeah. Backstage. Uh, so go. On. Uh, so I'm just, it's just not something I'm a fan of. This. Ah, yeah using the social media stuff. I get it because it's part of wrestling and has been for a while now and will continue to be a part of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, just not, I just don't like it that much. 
That's valid. Yeah, that's absolutely valid. Um, I, don't know, I, I, I get why it's there. It's just, I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah, but people, people, you got to promote it somehow, I guess, and that is the way to do it, I guess. Um, yeah. Backstage, uh, Fia Hale with Fallon uh, Henley and Kalani Jordan. Uh, they're just not being happy and have each other's backs. It's all sunshine and rainbows in the women's locker room. Uh, however, Peter Parker's there giving them some side eye, <laughs> which I was laughing at. She's they were, they were, they were like gushing over friendship and yeah, we got each other's backs and power. And it's it, it like she's just there on the side going. <laughs> um, so she, she gets up um, and just basically just like insults Fallon. I don't know why Fallon of all people was her target, <laughs> but she was. Um, and then they get in a bit of a shoving contest where one shove between a pair of them, but no, two shoves between a pair of them, one each, was were exchanged, and that resulted in the in a breakup. <laughs> yeah, be needed. Um, so yeah, a shove. And I mean, like, not to bring it up again, but you know, Punk and Perry was a shove. Uh... <laughs> uh, but just be grateful that, that was, there was no glass around. Yeah, very true. Could have been a whole lot worse. It was, it was allegedly real glass, you know. Ava could have feared for her life. She could have. Oh my god. Don't know who I'm missing out there by, by, by not capitalizing on that. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, we get three more rallies for Chick Williams. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got the next match of the night, which was uh, the family taking on the No Call A Catch crew. Uh, the family, of course, Tony D'Angelo, Channel Lorenzo, and Luca Crispino, which just sounds very Italian to say that out loud. Um, taking on the No Call A Catch crew, which is uh, Charlie Dempsey. Damon Kemp and Miles Bourne. Uh, of course, the yes. story here is the family did a favour for the No Call Catch crew, and the No Call Catch crew didn't pay him. And that's it. Mm. <laughs> uh, also, Tony wants the Hedish Cup, maybe. Uh, mm. So the, the family yeah. win this match following Tony D'Angelo pinning Charlie Dempsey with a spine buster. Uh, I rated it two of the quarters. It was. For me, clear for Miles who was going to win this match. If you saw like if you saw the show last week as well, it made really clear. And the match mm. didn't really have anything going for it. It wasn't a bad match, but it just didn't do anything for me other than you know set up a match in the future. A match that I admittedly not that excited for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I liked it for what it was. It seems to be a, a common theme with me in NXT. If it if it does, if it's to set something up, then as long as it's done well, I'm I'm cool with it. And this was done well. Uh, I, I mean, I guess, you know, whatever the family did, and to who they did it to, I guess, you know, if you don't pay them, you just have to pay. For, you, it's set on in a wrestling match. You set, essentially put out a hit on someone. You don't pay them, and it, it, you set it in a wrestling match. Of course, yeah. Because, mm. because that's how this works. Do you not remember the <laughs> the Godfather? Uh, I must have missed the wrestling match scene, you know. It, it's it's right there. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the six man six man tag team match. You know, but, uh, he, Vito Corleone and 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 Luca Brasi just get into a fist fight in a in the middle of a wrestling ring. It's a, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just classic storytelling, isn't it? Really. <laughs> all in all, I like I like the match. Uh, I, um, I, I'm liking Miles Bourne. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm seeing a lot more of him, and I, I'm liking what I see. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, although uh, Tony pinned Dempsey. So that's obviously going to set up the uh, the uh, Heritage Cup yeah. match. I refuse to say Heritage Cup Championship match uh, because it's it's stupid. <laughs> it's yeah, I refuse to say that. So set up for the Heritage Cup match. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if Tony can 
go with the British rounds for all the cent- rules, essentially. Yeah, like, I, mean, I, I don't think how he that wins was. at all. I don't think he wins mm. at the bat. No. Because Dempsey's still quite but, new in this reign, anyway, so... Yeah, yeah. And and also, uh, I think as Vic Jealousy we said that uh, Tony has pinned the Heritage Cup, Heritage Cup holder. So I'm not saying champion. <laughs> and he, although they're they're they're, not, they're all three of the no quarter catch crew are in, are introduced as the Heritage Cup champion. Damn, I said it. Holders. Yeah. So surely pinning either one of them would get you a title match. Yeah. But you know, you can't have it both ways. No, exactly. And also in saying that, it might it might not even be Dempsey who defends it against Tony. <laughs> so exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's a, it's so stupid. Like the free road rule can apply to tag belts. I'm fine with that. Or like tag Kodish cups. Mm. But like <laughs> yeah, yeah. singles titles. For a trophy. It's, or just nah. single, yeah, singles trophies, yeah, whatever. Like it it's just stupid. Like it should be the person who won it in the first place. And saying so that it will yeah. it will most likely be Dempsey who faces Tony. But Yeah. Just the concept that it could be Damon or Miles. It's stupid in itself. Yeah. Wrestling. Wrestling. Um, <laughs> moving on, we go to another match in the ring. It's Jada Parker and Fallon Henley. R- remember that match, r- Remember that showing contest I mentioned earlier? Where only two shells were exchanged? <laughs> well, now it's a match. <laughs> um... So yeah, yeah. Uh, Jada wins with the teardrop hip check, which is just a running hip tackle. Um, I read this one of three quarters. It was pretty basic. Um, Jada's improving, but the match didn't really seem to flow smoothly. I don't know what happened. The match result was really the only thing that was a, that was a surprise to me because Jada winning just caught me off guard. Um, maybe it's a sign though that Fallon could be on her way to, to roll that down, which is a shame because. There's seemingly no plans for Fallon on NXT other than, oh, I can be your friend. Oh, I'll be the backup. I'll be your tag partner. I'll be your support. But, the, the, like, she's not doing anything for herself, which is yeah. surprising. Because she, uh, uh, given her, like, she's one like, she's one, probably one of the more, like, veteran-esque people now in the, in the NXT women's division. Yeah. Like, given the entire scene, like, I, I don't think, maybe, maybe, maybe Roxanne is the other one. Like, I, I can't think of anyone who's been there as long. <laughs> nah. JC? G, maybe? Right. I don't know. <laughs> y- yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's match for me. It felt like I've missed about half of it because of our breaks. They like, oh, put an ad break yeah. right in the middle of it. And like most of the match just went by. I don't know they, how much they, they, they cut they, out, but... They cut off the first, like, two minutes of the match. Because... Yeah. You had Jane do her entrance, and it was like, oh, we'll come back from an ad break. So Fanner's doing her entrance to no music. It's just... Because <laughs> they, for some reason, they cut out for the ads. So she's just coming out. She's doing her entire entrance with no sound. Obviously, the sound for those who watch it in the arena and stuff. But, like, it's so stupid. But like, time your ad breaks. Like, if you've got a long match, that's fine. This was like a four minute, maybe four or five minute match. That was an ad mm. break. That's, that's, that's eat half time away. <laughs> yeah. I said, I, I can't really judge this match either way because I barely saw any of it. Yeah. And what I saw was, was fine. You saw like, three minutes of a big screen and then three minutes of like a little screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, honestly, watching on the network is so frustrating, especially watching like NXT because the amount of ad breaks in it is ridiculous. Yeah, and that like, is the issue you... with a lot of wrestling nowadays. Is that there's just ad breaks. Oh. At least mainstream, anyway. There's, there's too many ad breaks. Like, I mean, with with, with TNA, like they do picture and picture. So you sp- and I watch it on the, their YouTube stuff. So I still see, get to see majority of it. They cut. They do a couple of breaks, but. You don't. They don't really cut out much of the match. Yeah. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just. It's just an issue for me in mainstream wrestling. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Too uh, much. It's just a shame. 
for Fallon. Mm. It's, 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 it's good that Jada's getting some sort of shine at least. Because she's going to get that yeah. spotlight to improve herself. And she just needs a new finisher. Like, so that's really good. So that's, that's, that's better <laughs> than what she has right now. Yeah. <laughs> and also, for me, is. Um, well, it seems like they just completely turned away from this. From teasing the Fallon uh, heel turn. Yeah. Like, that's just gone now. Like, you've got side eye at <laughs> Sun and Liver. And then a bit more the following week but after that yeah it's just almost like that, that, that didn't happen yeah. no one's mentioned it again so it's, it's, it's just, just weird gone. that it even happened in the first place it was she clearly wasn't happy with that mm. win at, at, at the PLE and it was like oh yeah. okay we're going somewhere we're cooking what are we doing <laughs> we turn the oven off that's what we've done ah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, so we move on now. Uh, we get a rally of support again, uh, but this time for Ilya, uh, as JD Madonna uh, mentions that uh, he's had rivalries and stuff with with uh, Ilya, uh, and Pete Dunne also says that he thinks Ilya's gonna win. Uh, Tyler Bateheimer says that he thinks Trick Williams gonna win because he, he's got the Tekkers. Yes, Tyler Bate said Tekkers. <laughs> That, that entire thing, like, especially with Bait and Dunn, like, so every time I see, hear Pete Dunn talk, in my head I go, I always go, this is not the way. <laughs> every time. <laughs> like, I can't not say that in my head every time I see, every time I see hear Pete Dunn talk. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing about his deadpan, in, 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 in the way he talks, like, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> Uh, it's, he, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's such a good like character he has. Like, I mean, it's it's cool because I'm hearing like accents that are, uh, that come from about an hour away from me on worldwide TV. I yeah. like that, but no, nah, and it's also weird because uh, I'm the same age as Tyler Bate, which is just very weird. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think he, I was. It, I think when I first saw him, it was the uh, NXT UK uh, tournament thing, mm, and yeah. it was like, this guy is like nineteen or twenty. Nineteen. And I was like, I am like twenty three or whatever. I, 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 I don't know how old I was at the time, but I remember feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm the same age or just slightly older than him. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> it's weird. It's very weird. Like, like, the thing is, like, we're getting to a, we're getting to ages now as wrestling fans, where wrestlers are genuinely going to be younger than us, achieving yeah. things at a higher level than what we probably did at that age. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. I mean, you know, you got you got Leon Slater, who's what nineteen. Yeah. You've got Jordan Grace, who's twenty four. That's the same as well. Like. What she, is she, happening? She, she, like, she didn't go for a while as well, Jordan Grace. Yeah. Like, I think she signed with TNA when she was 20, 21. It's just, it's, it's mental. It really is. Like, how is this happening? It's like, even like someone like Austin Theory, like, who's the main oh, star on SmackDown, he's the current tag champion. He's like, what, 24, 25, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's truly insane. Over here, you've got Chantal Jordan, who started at like what, 16, 15? Oh, like that, yeah. To be fair, like, it's the UK scene. It's probably like, probably like, uh, like 12. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think Brandon Jordan started about that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just like, like, uh, how is this happening? I... Like,. <laughs> Like, I time know. has gone way too quickly. Time goes way too quickly, and rest of them stop, I guess. And, uh, so, yeah, by the time we're like 50, there's gonna be like these, these like 20 year olds who are just. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and when we're 50, we're still gonna be doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so squared! <laughs> but probably falling behind on the 
current podcasting formats and stuff from what people are streaming on. Yeah. Like, it won't be Twitch anymore. Oh, I remember when we watched NXT. <laughs> <laughs> These newfangled things. <laughs> What's the wrestling? Uh, oh, my hip. Jeez. Right. Anywho. Yes, so it's now time to move on to the NXT Underground <laughs> Contract signing. So also this is set up oh. for whenever I think it's next week actually, uh, and it's turned the ground um, between Natalia and Lola Vice, the future of women's wrestling. Um, uh, so in Natalia's corner is Carmen Petrovic, who is like the karate woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, no one's in Lola's, which means big reveal. Um, Lola says that she'll kick Natalia's ass. Natalia <laughs> says that she'll tap Lola out. Lola then reveals who her trading partner is. It's Shayna Baszler. <laughs> uh, she will smack mm. about Carmen, which leads to a brawl. Mm. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so generic. <laughs> you know what? I didn't mind it that much. Like It had a, uh, a cool feel, but yeah. Like, the... The the promos back and forth were a little bit basic in that yeah. it's just a typical contract signing. Yeah. But the add a little bit of you know I'm gonna tap you out, I'm gonna knock you out for the underground thing. Yeah. But it's still the same format essentially of a yeah. of a contract signing. Someone is someone's gonna kick someone in the face or. Typically, I'm surprised there was no table set up yeah. for someone to go through a table, but, you know, it was... If anything, it, felt, cool it felt a bit refreshing that there was no table there. Yeah. And, and, and again, uh, people are around the ring, that stuff. I like the um, the clapping, or the tapping of the mat in time to oh, Natalia's yeah. theme song. I, I kind of like that. Yeah. I, it's, I'm surprised that hasn't happened before. Yeah, I mean, also just to go, yeah. go as well into it, as well, there's a couple of lines as well that they said that I didn't really cover, but I, I remember them saying it. Uh, Natalia mentions how she survived the dungeon and mm. stuff like that, and then like, if, she, if she can survive that, she can survive someone like Lola. Like, <laughs> and there was also Lola yeah. lying about just because just she shakes her ass doesn't mean she can't kick Natalia's ass. <laughs> also, what were those cobble cutouts, cutouts of Lola? Oh, they, were, they, out, were, they were they were amazing. I, what was that? It, so good, so good. It's like the bottom part is like extended yeah. or whatever, so you can you can like yeah. Swing it back it's like it's like hinged science. It's so good. Like whoever whoever brought us to the show. Yeah, random applause. Well Take Bravo. a bow, whoever you are. Yeah, Bravo. so good. It's so good. I, I remember seeing that just being like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, nailed it. Completely nailed it. Absolutely. Speaking of nailed it, let's go to the beach. Uh, nah. It's time for the beach ball match. <laughs> Wonder where you're going with that one. I mean, I was going to I was gonna go into the, into the whole Nicki Minaj song, but then like, I, I signed against it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Blair Nurple against Sol Rukar. Uh, for those who aren't aware, Blood and Port is a favourite mm. among the HW faithful. By that I mean me and Frozzy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Sol Ruka is a surfer. Uh, Sol Ruka, of course, wins with the Soul Snatcher, uh, which is like the uh, like the, the rope assisted springboard like turnaround cutter. Yeah, rotate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, she wins with that, uh, which is on the ropes this time as opposed to the corner. Uh, to a paddle that Blair was holding, so Blair's head hits the paddle upon impact, which no one seems to reference. Uh, <laughs> literally, no one mentioned it. She was holding it right there, her head bangs into it, it's a kayfabe reason to lose. <laughs> Even though it's been out of foam. But, but, let's, 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 let's ignore that bit. Okay? It, was, it, was a, it was a real plastic pedal. <laughs> um, uh. But yeah, uh, I rate it three stars. 
Uh, it was surprisingly good. Um, not because of the, who was involved in the match. It was because of the stipulation. Because I saw like inflatable pools. I saw like life boys or whatever they're called. Like, the things that you hit. Uh, beach balls. <laughs> I was sceptical. <laughs> because WWE have got a history of poorly done gimmick matches. Like very poorly done. And this looked like one of those matches. But eventually they, they did bring in like a steel chair. They used, utilized a natural picnic table. Like, it was just mm. really good, eventually. And then they did the whole thing through the table, off the barricade. Uh, it was, uh, honestly, I, I, I enjoyed it. And it may, maybe a bit of bias when I say this, <laughs> but when will they give Blair a fucking win? <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, uh, the match didn't fit Soul because it was just an aesthetic. It was like, oh, she's a surfer, yeah. beach balls and beach stuff. Yeah. Uh, it fitted Blit because there's no rules. There's no DQ. She can use whatever she wants to use. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, obviously, because Soul's probably going to get getting pushed a bit more, so it makes sense from a booking side of things. It's just, from a kayfabe. Why isn't Blair utilizing more weapons? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly, I wasn't that into the match. Uh, I I wanted to be the match, like the like the match part itself. I I, I thought it was really good. I, he's so still fairly new, got got taken out uh, as he was re really coming coming through and stuff. But I, th- I thought the stipulation slightly ruined it. Okay, yeah. It it just felt a like I said, it just felt a bit silly. You know, you had like a ball pit. Uh, like you had the uh, the, the body boards, which which are just foam. <laughs> like, yeah, that's fair. Like. I mean, it might hurt a bit, but not near as much as they are selling. No. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not, I'll see, I'm not gonna, I, I, I've, I've never been hit with one of them, but I, it, in order to flow, it can't be plastic. Yeah. Like, it, it, so if it's, in order for it to flow, it has to be some sort of foam. Yeah. It just, I mean, they look nice with the, the NXT logo on it. I thought that looked quite cool. And, Soul coming down with her surfboard, and like when when they were on the barricades up near the picnic table, I was really worried because because I saw the wood the wooden legs and I thought that's a legit picnic table. That's not going to break. Yeah, that's going to hurt. Then then obviously the the uh, it was the, uh, just a yeah. a normal wrestling table, so I was a bit relieved. Yeah, but also I thought that was like that ruined it a little bit. Yeah, it's like don't introduce don't introduce it if you're going to use it. Yeah, and I yeah, I thought it was yeah. But all in all, I yeah, I, it was a good match, but I just felt slightly that the uh, it it was too gimmicky. Like I understand why they did that. Yeah, but like you said, it benefited Blair more. Yeah, like it should benefit Blair a lot more. And yeah, the, the, the finish was nice. I liked that finishing move. Yeah, so snatcher, I like that. I, I, I will admit, I'm not a huge fan of the move. Uh, in the corner, yeah. that is the corner. It looks a bit too manufactured. Uh, nice. but with the way it's done on the ropes, it's more authentic, and it looks like it could just be a move that you fall into, as opposed to yeah. you have to be like, oh, I'm gonna stand here and bend over a little, <laughs> yeah, so you can hit the move when you come into it. <laughs> it's like. It's the, it's the same thing as like, you remember like the, you know, like, I don't know, I, 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 who, who did the move, I, 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 I won't say his name, but Del Rio's uh, corner stomp thing that he did. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. like, you've got to like hold yourself up, like intentionally to get hit by the stomp. It was like, it's it like, it becomes a point where in KFA, wouldn't you just not hold on and be like, you'd be out of it, so you'd be out of it like that. Like, you'd just like be out of the way. Like, yeah. Like, I, I I do get that. It's like with like kayfabe plays a, a a big part in a lot of finishing moves. Yeah. It's like for me, my biggest one was always uh, the switching music. 
Like, Sean Marcus is stamping his yes. foot. You know it's coming. Get out the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, nowadays, like, uh, do, you, do, do, do you reckon time with the Claymore? He was like, three, <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, just get out the way. Yeah, you know what's coming. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, you. Do you like this video? There is a button. It's a very sexy button. It says subscribe on it. I wish I could click on it, but YouTube won't let me. Damn fuckers. But, yeah, it's like, it, it, has to play a big part in a lot of British now. Yeah. <laughs> you have to really suspend your disbelief for, for a lot of things. Yeah, it's like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's coming. I guess I'm going to get hit now. <laughs> yeah, let, let, yeah, let's let's turn around, stand up and turn around and just get hit with it. Like, yeah. Mm. But yeah, uh, the, the joys of being the joys of being a young fan and not like not like sticking to everything you see. <laughs> yeah, not trying to bring logic into wrestling. Yeah, exactly. Because wrestling is, is really not a logical sport. No, <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> no, um, Just didn't. But yeah, speaking of logical, uh, we get backstage. Trip Williams, he's here. He's obviously he's here, but. Uh, He's got a pep talk with Johnny Nagano, Johnny Wrestling, North American champion, NFT champion, tag champion, I think, at one point as well. <laughs> I think you mean Shawn Michaels. Shit, you're right, sorry. Yeah, it is Shawn Michaels, yeah. You're right, sorry. And it, it, it's, I get it, it's too similar of a look, but yeah, it, 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 that, one, that one was Shawn Michaels. You're right, that's completely on me, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so Shawn Michaels comes in, gives uh, a, a pep talk, <laughs> talks about his switch of music and how he... Probably should have not hit as much time as he did. Uh, but um, <laughs> just goes into like uh, a general pep talk for Trick and then mm. ends it off with whoop that Trick. Oh, and also Trick talks to his mum on the phone before. Mm. Uh, so you know what's coming. Yeah. It's like if it, oh, if yeah. they didn't make it painstakingly obvious. <laughs> yeah. That, that the main event, the main event was, was going to go in a certain way. Mm. Just to uh, give us a little bit of a hint, didn't it? Yeah, it was like, don't worry, Ma, I'm going to do it for you. Uh, and then Ma was mm. like, but Trick, before you go, do one thing for me. He's like, what's that, Ma? you got to whoop that Trick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so cringe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Really okay. quickly, yeah. what parent... Is saying to their kid their catchphrase. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just in general, other people saying that is cringy. Yeah, it's fine with fans doing it because it's like normally like a whoop that trick, and there's like a big like chorus of people doing it. Like, yeah. But like when it's one person, it feels really weird. <laughs> yeah, just go and whoop that trick. Yeah. Go and do it. <laughs> Yes, Rosie. Nah, I'm good. Yes, Rosie. Sean Gargano. <laughs> Johnny Johnny Michaels. <laughs> oh, uh, um, but you know, so um, yeah, moving on. Um, we go into the main event. No, we don't go into the main event because there's something that we're missing, which is the thing that I don't mind missing, but I've got to cover it because it's on the fucking show. And <laughs> if I'm not thorough, I'm nothing. It's Baron Corbin against Lexus King. Uh, uh, this I, I didn't mention it earlier because I forgot to. Um, there was a thing earlier where Baron's getting interviewed and then Lexus comes in with like a gift basket, which is just Lexus things. It's like Lexus merch and a Lexus sign eight by ten. Like <laughs> it was one thing I like. It's the it's the it's the it's the, it's the gift basket they give to people. <laughs> like he tried, he tried it with um. I think it was Fear Hale as well during the whole Riley Osborne yeah. stuff. It was like he gave, he tried to give her a kid basket, which is just a side eight by ten on the side of his shirt. <laughs> um, bruv. Uh, but yeah, so Baron Corwin lets his king. Uh, Lexus wins with a low blow and the coronation. I rate this one of the cool. core stars. Um, this was Corbin's last NXT match, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, um, what a disappointing uh, send off! 
I guess putting so much effort into trying to make Trick look like a believable star means that you can't give your actual stars a good send off. Because this, wow, this was an insult. <laughs> wow. Like, firstly, it's not bad enough that he has the, the, the sliding chair for his entrance, Lexus King, which is already very anime esque. Um, it's just he has no charisma. It, it, he's got no aura to him. There's nothing there. It, he, he's like, it's my rules or it's my life. And it's like, you're still Brian Pillman's son. Like, th that's what you are. You're not just King, you're Brian yeah. Pillman Jr. Like, yeah. if you want to be a character, you can lean into being Brian Pillman's son. Like, be the loose cannon or be the loose uh, Arsenal or I don't know. So, <laughs> that don't. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't say Brian's number one moniker, but like, so similar. <laughs> the unhinged canon or something like that. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like, just something like that. But, um, uh, but yeah, it's exactly, it's exactly as Freddie's saying here as well. Imagine releasing Von Wagner and keeping Texas King. <laughs> Mate, like, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. Just <laughs> like I, you, uh, I, I have no words. I have no words. I just, just move on. I can't. Yeah. I don't know what that was. That is valid. Just, we're gonna have to move on. I don't know what to say. That is valid. I, um, genuine lost words. Yeah. Uh, so we move on then uh, swiftly to the <sighs> NXT Championship main event. Trick Williams and Ilya Dragunov for champion defending. <laughs> and with a trick shot, Trick Williams wins. One, two, three. New champion. <laughs> Wrestling. Um, so, yeah, um, Trick wins. We've got a new champion in NXT. Uh, I'm not surprised. This was this was the this was this was the result we were all going to do for the last few months. Um, yeah. It made it obvious. It was like, oh, Trick's career is on the line. Yep. Cool. There was no reason to add that in other than to make it mind-bogglingly obvious that he was going to win here. Um, this wasn't even their, their strongest match. I much prefer the the Avengers Day match. Like. There's that one, there's the Heat Wave match, there's the other one on NXT TV they had as well. Like, this was probably the weakest match they've had. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's, uh, not, it's not the same level, it just ticks, it ticks all the boxes that it needed to do. Uh, it's just a shame that the result was what it was. Um, it was always going to be a strong match for the Ilya, and now I'm worried for the future, because I don't know what a trick reign looks like, and We've seen matches that he's had a singles matches like as like lower guys on the card, and they've not been yeah. good. Uh, nah. I don't know. Obviously, they see something in Trick, and they, and they have done for like the last year, but like, yeah, it's a case of just I don't know where we're gonna go with this, but we'll see. But for now, I guess we are in the whoop that trick era of NXT. It would appear so. Uh, again, my I don't, have, I don't have complaints. The right word because it was a, it was a good match. Just it was just short, yeah. like it, that. And I, I think they know that trick going over 15, 15 20 minutes. It's not gonna look all that good yeah. when I. He, uh, it, short shorter matches are Trick's friend at at this stage. Yeah. Uh, but the issue is, can you really have a short championship match? Like a main event has to at least twenty twenty five minutes. Yeah. If if you're really going, if it's just a, if it's a, if it's a TV title match, then twenty minutes tops. But if you're trying to tell a story, it, it, it needs to be a while. Yeah, absolutely. And it, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, we also we spoke about 
uh, just before last week's episode and, and how we're pretty sure Tr- Trick was going to win but we just don't know how the rain's going to go yeah and y- hopefully this rain makes him yeah like properly makes him and you know he because you know as as you rightfully say it, it is this is developmental and but as a champion you need to be you need to be on the edge of of being a top top guy yeah and and so hopefully this can do that for trick yeah because because he is he is that guy now. Yeah, I, I, he is. Ilya is going to main roster. Ilya is going to main roster on Monday. He has to. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point in having him drop this title? Yeah. We will, if get, not going, we, if, will, if, we, will, we will get into the draft stuff as well in a minute. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just a weird mm. scenario that we're in now, where it's it could legitimately just be the worst reign we see. Um, saying that. <laughs> Obviously, Bron Breaker was the was he the first new champion? I can't remember. Uh, that of of two point I mean, um, probably yeah. I, I think he beat who did he beat? I don't know who he beat now, Tom Ryan. But he was like one of the first champions at least of the original NXT two point oh when yeah, he when, when he when, when he was a face, and that was a horrible raid. <laughs> um. <laughs> Obviously, he then he got better with time, but the rain was still kind of quite boring and stagnant. Um, mm. And then, you know, fast forward a bit, you know, he's like lost the title. Dolph is now champion, which is a surprise in itself. But uh, he wins it back from Dolph again. It's kind of boring because he's not a fate, because he's not a uh, heel. Sorry. Uh, and then finally, he loses it again, and he reinvents himself during the Carmelo reign when he turns heel. And yeah. then. That's where he sort of picked his and get that steam going. I yeah, he found it. I can see this being the opposite for Trick because he started he started as a heel because he was psychic to Carmelo's heel. Uh, obviously Carmelo turned and then in turn Trick turned. Um, yeah, and then Carmelo turned heel again, keeping <laughs> uh, <laughs> Trick as a face though. Um, it's just a weird thing, like. I don't want to be so negative because we've not seen it yet. It's it's just yeah. I'm going off like past experiences and past champions and similar sort of situations where I'm not the most hopeful for this. And like I said before, I think the first challenge is going to be Cameron Cross, <laughs> which I'm not going to be able to not going to be a good match. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Um, but yeah, as well as well, yeah. to go back to back match, to go back to yeah, to go back to match length, Dragonov has long matches as a rule. So him losing so quickly is just an odd decision. Yeah, yeah fully agree. Fully agree with that. It's, I think it was like twelve minutes to match. It was like it was like it was nothing like an Ilya match that we're used to seeing. Nah, it it, was, it felt it just felt so felt off. Yeah, it was like it was it was rushed and, and he got he got gassed more easily, which was. It always don't get gassed. Like if I, if one thing that you don't get is gassed. Like <laughs> no, it's just, it's just a very very strange thing. But um, yeah, see what happens. I suppose we'll see what happens. It makes no sense. I agree. Um, but yeah, so we'll have a quick a quick little look at, at week two of spring breaking, and then we'll get into draft stuff, and then that'll be the end of it. Um, so point is what I got here. Here we go. So, they announced on this show four matches for week two. There'll probably be like two more. Um, we finally get the one on one encounter between Fear Hale and Digi and Digi Jane. Should be a fun match. Has it has enough story behind it? Yeah. I'm, I'm down for it. Not sure really, I'm, not, I'm not sure it'll be a good match in in, in, in practice, but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, hopefully Fia gets that win that she needs because yeah. JC winning doesn't really benefit anything. Nah, Fia uh, has to win this one. Fia has to win. Like, I don't see a world in that she doesn't win unless there's like interference, but saying that she has Balan, she has Kalani like, as well as like backup for yeah. Jasmine. Like, so, yeah, that's there. Um, we have 
NST Underground. So the first time ever, I believe, for NST Underground between Natalia and Lola Vice, the future women's wrestling. Um, again, this should be this should be pretty good. Like these are both two like properly trained wrestlers as well. Like yeah. obviously Natalia has the experience of being one of the, of being part of the Hart family, so she has that training, that extensive training that the Hearts have generally. Uh, Lola Vice is trained in obviously mixed uh, like in, the, in the MMA related stuff like Muay Thai stuff like that. Uh, so she's she's also yeah. used to being in a combat setting. Um, it makes sense, of course, that Shane is her partner because of the MMA training. I believe Carl Petrovich is also MMA trained to some extent. I, th- I, think, yeah. I, I think she's like I, th- I think she's like like martial arts like karate and stuff like that. Yeah, I'd assume so. I don't really know that much about. Uh, Lola Vice or Carmen Petrovic, but yeah, from what from what the character they give off, yeah, they they know their stuff. Yeah, so the match itself should be good. Um, I look forward to it because this is the first time we've seen it in NXT as well, so we're not entirely sure what we're gonna get. It could be similar to Raw Underground. Uh, I hope it's not personally. Uh... I I think it's gonna be more. Um, do you see the uh, the TNA fight pit between Mike Bailey and, and uh, yes. Kenny King? Yeah. yeah, I think it's got that kind of. I think we got kind of that vibe. I hope you're right because I, 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 I did enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that kind of vibe. Hopefully. Yeah. Given, um, they put, given they had no ring ropes during the contract signing, I think so. Yeah. It's, hopefully, it's not just in the ring, like in the arena, and it's just mm. <laughs> like yeah, I, yeah. It was one thing I liked yeah, about, about Raw Underground is the the corniness of it. I like how corny it was. It was just like having a security guard by an unmarked door being like, hey, you coming in? You're like, yeah, come on in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Didn't uh, Talk and Shop do a parody of it? Oh, I'm pretty sure they did. I don't know what it was from. Yeah, I'm sure they did. I, I think Scott Demore won it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, or Tommy Dream was one of the two. Both are incredible choices. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, I think Scott Demore. Scott Demore dresses up in, in a mask, I think. Yeah. It's so silly. But yeah. Uh, so we move on now to the other two matches on here. They announced two title matches as well for next week. Uh, so we have first the NXT North America Championship. Overy defends against Ivar. Ha! Oh. Oh. Give it to me. It's going to be a great match. Uh... Obviously, two big men, two meaty men, slapping meat, etc. Uh, this is going to be a Hoss match. I think this won't be as good as Jumble Threat at the PLE, but it'll be good. Mm. Like, there was something about the match yeah. with Dijak and Josh Briggs that was just another level. Mwah. Like, this, Perfect. I don't see being on the same level, but I see it being really good. Yeah. For the spring break in, like a TV special match, yeah, should be really, should be really good. Yeah, and then the final thing I've got here is where is it? There it is. Uh, for the NXT tag team titles, uh, David Frazier and Axiom defend against the Authors of Pain, uh, Akam and Razor, who I believe are going to be accompanied by Karrion Cross, Paul Ellering, and Scarlet, which is just overkill. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, I want to say Frazier and Axiom retain. <laughs> I'm not going to, are they? <laughs> oh, bruh. I genuinely have uh, no idea. And I that, don't see it. That's part of the fun, I guess, is that, is that, is that you don't truly know. But... But we should know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fraser and Action should not be losing the titles in what? Their first defense? First defense has been like two, three weeks, I think. Two weeks? Uh, by by it's night two, it'll be three weeks, yeah. So, yeah, <sighs> I don't know. I don't want that Wolves of Pain to win. That's the, that's the bottom line for me. It's like, I just, I don't want them to win. But I. I think uh, they might. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's confusing because obviously they appeared on SmackDown this week. Yeah. But 
this uh, a, a challenge for the I I'm not typically a big fan of if you're on if you're going to be on NXT you're on NXT yeah. if you're going to be on SmackDown you're on SmackDown I don't like the cross brand thing I don't really like it, especially when it's an established main roster roster team star whatever I'm not the biggest fan of it yeah but if you're going to be there then be there not hit not be everywhere yeah exactly yeah. And that also goes back into a little thing from NXT that I forgot to mention as well, where the Fraser and X are complaining about the AOP, and then you got mm. all the teams are there, they're agreeing, and they're like, "Yeah, these main roster teams, they're coming in and taking our title shots, so we can, and we claim we claim to get a look in." And then in come the OC, in come Curtis Anderson, and they're like, "Yeah, guys, these main roster teams coming in to take our opportunities away." <laughs> that made me laugh. At that. <laughs> Uh, who put the mirror? It was a um, Manic Blade. Manic Blade. Ah. Oh. Like, ah, uh, it's that's the one. Th- I'm, I'm not a superstitious type person, but it's that's the one thing that gets me. Oh really? Like, I, I, yeah, I don't know why. I just like, for me, it's like, why tempt it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I, 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 I love a lot of things though. It's like I wouldn't break a mirror intentionally. Like, I would. No. The same way, like I will walk, I will, I will walk under a ladder, but that's, uh, that's really because I don't want ladders to fall on me. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's, 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 it's not for the luck or anything. <laughs> yeah, Look, it, it, my biggest thing is walking over three drains. I have to say white rabbit three times after I do it. I don't know why. It's not. I don't believe it. It's just a habit now. And it, it irritates me so much. I, I I will walk on the road to avoid walking over three drains. Really. Which is probably more dangerous. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just a stupid habit. I blame my sister for it. Or get one over. Or is it yours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a stupid habit. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm going to be optimistic and say Frasier and Action Retain. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, uh, I wish I shared your optimism. Here's the thing, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's two weeks, they can't lose title in two weeks. It's the first offence, come on. <laughs> but even though this is a new era... Oh shit. It's still, it's still WWE. It's not, it's, it's not, it, it, it's, it's not the first offence. Wait, is it? Oh no, 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 it is. Yeah, no, no, it's, 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 they won it on NXT, sorry, yeah, they beat Wolf Dogs on NXT, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I thought they won it right. and then depending on NXT. <laughs> Like, it, this is still the WWE, and they was they have, they still have a history of this stuff. Yes. Like, uh, and I'm I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, I, I, mm, I I I'm not. Uh, I'm. I, I my heart wants phrase and axiom, but my head's going with AOP. Yeah. And. I, I can't make a prediction on this one. Yeah. I. But going to my head, I'm unfortunately going to say AOP. That is, yeah, it's valid. It's not ideal, but it's valid. <laughs> it's because uh, you, know, you, you just get that bad feeling in the pit of your stomach. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But let's move on. It may be something you have to face. From, 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 that, from that pain in your stomach. Uh, let's move on to <laughs> the final bit of this uh, episode. We're going to have a quick look at the draft, uh, specifically the NXT parts of it, not the whole thing, because there's like 30 people that are drafted all together. It was like. <laughs> yeah. So, firstly, first round pick, Carmelo Hayes. Go ahead and head down. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And. I think it's something that was long coming as well because it's yeah. he's one of those guys that sort of achieved everything that he could do in NXT. So I feel like yeah. after trick stuff, it was going to be a case of him growing up and just when rather than if. Um, yeah. And this is it. This is the time he's going to go to SmackDown. I could see him, you know, going for the Intercontinental the, the, the title down the line because he not necessarily the world title so much because that's like Cody right now and Cody's not losing it yeah. for a while. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be in for a while. Like, I, 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 is, it, is it US title? Sorry, 
on, on yeah, the, she was uh, title. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So Carmelo um, Hayes and Logan Paul. That's <laughs> that's the person that beats. That should beat Logan Paul. He does so much for him mm-hmm. in terms of getting eyes on him. Yeah. Even though there are to an extent, but you beat Logan Paul. No matter what you think about Logan Paul being involved in wrestling, he, like he's got a lot of buzz around him. Yeah, absolutely. Like he's he's a name people know in this day and age. And if you can beat him, like you, you, you're set for for a, a while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and Carmelo can do that. Carmelo can absolutely do that. And Carmelo can establish more of his brand, and he can be more himself. I'd say. I'll sat down. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's short, a good place for him. It's a good place for him. Absolutely. Especially, especially with, with the roster that are there, like there's LA Knight, AJ Styles, Cody. Like just to name a few off on my end, Logan Paul. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. of course the only other NFT pick in that in the on the Friday draft was in the final round, the final pick of what was televised. Kiana James is going to Raw. Nah. That, about that. that caught me off guard completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very pleased yeah. for her though. I'm very pleased for her. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a it's a pity she didn't get a chance to be NXT Women's Champion. Yeah, but at the same time, not win the title and still getting noticed and going to the the main brand of the WWE. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, she's got a a a, a character a, a unique character, so I should say. Um, she got a distinct aura about her as well. She, yeah, like she's up there with like Tiffy Shadow. Like who's also recently got to the main roster as well. Like both sort of obsessed with themselves and obsessed with doing what's best for them. Um, yeah. And it's just a really good fit. I, I see her being on Raw because Timmy does that down. That's the only reason why. <laughs> like it, it'd be the way around because you don't, you wouldn't want them like to clash because no, the the kind of similar characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, very pleased with Kiara. Awesome. I think she'll shine on Raw. Because it's so WWE doing as well. They're, they're slowly like improving their women's division as well, like improving the way the women are booked as well. Like it's not so like well, obviously with Rhea out, it's very uh, in question marks what they're doing right now because Becky is just current champion, yeah. which is a questionable call. Um, but you got other people up there like Liv Morgan as well. You got Nia Jax. You got uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, you got like. She's amazing. Now. She's there as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I can pick that like my brain. I can't think of anyone else there. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. It, she do good. She do things. Do she make moves there? Um, yeah, absolutely. She make yeah. moves. Yeah. Um, and then obviously announced on social media. Of course, we had the additional uh, Baron Corbin going that down, as we re- referenced already yeah. in the in the show. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. It's it like bronze gone up to. I was like, did Bron go to Raw? Did he? There yeah, is, yeah bronze bronze. Raw, so yeah, yeah I, I completely missed that one because I just assumed I just forgot he wasn't on NXT anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Bron Bron going to Raw and uh, Baron Corbin going to SmackDown. So they bring out the Wolf Dogs, yeah. which I guess makes sense. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just what they do with Corbin now. Like, right, keep this. What, what what he's doing now? Keep it. Don't. Yeah. Don't put him back to Happy Corbin. Don't put him back to the Lone Wolf stuff. Let's, let's rehire Riddick Moss and let's bring him back in. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Madcap. Madcap Moss. Oh, I, th- I think I think I think he'll show up in TNA at some point with uh, Tennille. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that happening. And of course, the only other NXT pin that remains here is of course the NXT original tag team, NXT OGs, NXT through and through, the OC. Go and sat down. These yeah. young up and comers, um, you know, they they got they got a whole future ahead of them. You know, I can see them doing really well sat down. I can see them not getting over at all in booking, and. You know, apparently, uh, apparently, they're group ends of AJ Styles. So that was something that's, forward. That's, that's what I mean. It, just, just in general with this draft, like, don't draft people who are already on your who are already on your roster. 
Well, I don't. I think the way it works for the draft is everyone's a free agent. Yeah, but it's so like it. It the draft didn't do a lot for me. It was just yeah. Apart from Kiana, like and and Carmelo, like no one really changed. No, it so I was like, well, what's well, I, 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 I do know that Raw's one, uh, like, one, like one day's part of this draft does something because it's like it six it, rounds. Like, it'll be six rounds and then the rest on probably online. Yeah, yeah, it should be, it should be better. I like it. I like the draft, but yeah, so far it's got off to the best start. Yeah. Also, they drafted Cedric Alexander and Ashante the Adonis as a team. I didn't know they were a team. <laughs> no, poor Cedric, man. Cedric got getting battered by Bron this week as well. Yeah. It... Like, uh, it's not going well for Cedric Alexander, is it? No, but how about the Adonis? <laughs> I genuinely don't know who that is. <laughs> he was the I genuinely don't. He was the small guy in a uh, hit row. Uh, I, I I was trying to think of the day of the third member of Hit Row with the fourth member of Hit Row. Yeah, yeah. I knew there's there's AJ Francis, there's B Fab, Swerve. I couldn't remember the other guy. Yeah, okay. He, <laughs> he, he <never> <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I didn't know he was back, but cool. Yeah, he's been back for a little bit, but doing nothing. Um, but yeah, that was what was NXT related on the draft. Um, yeah. It, yeah, that pretty much brings an end to this episode. Uh, yeah. this, this has been a bit of a long one. This has been like an hour something, I think. Or that could be just a stream, actually. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, this, this has been me this has been the show as always please give us a follow on the platforms below us here so our instagram our facebook our twitter or x and of course our twitch which we're actually streaming on right now um and of course please give craig over here a follow on his twitter which is just underneath his camera uh as always a great sport great guy coming on sus as usual but we let that slide um uh and otherwise, if you feel so inclined, please give me a follow as well. My name is just the Breezy, just underneath here on Twitter. Um, but yeah, other than that, ignore the Bugs Bunny on Craig's shoulder. It's been there the entire time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been Dan, DP the Breezy. This has been Craig, and we will see you next time.